How's it going guys? This is Jamie and Polish and in this video I'm going to show you how to set up your very own free dedicated Valheim server. So with Miss Lands coming up here pretty soon, it's going to be great to have the knowledge to set up a dedicated Valheim server prepped so that when it does drop you can get into the game with you and your friends immediately. So first off you're going to want to open Steam and go to your library. From there you're going to want to click on this tab that says games. Go ahead and click the tool selection. And in the search bar, because you're probably going to have 100 extra applications to scroll through, go ahead and type in Valheim so you can find the dedicated server a lot easier. So go ahead and click on the Valheim dedicated server and go ahead and hit install. It's a pretty small download. It'll download into your normal Steam directory. And while we're waiting for that to download, next thing you need to do is set up a forwarding port for your computer so that you can actually host the server. So from there, you're going to want to do a couple of steps. First, I'd recommend finding a user guide for your router. Uh, whether or not you want to go through that, it's up to you. This is one for mine, the Archer AX10, and it kind of walks you through how to do port forwarding. And it's pretty simple. You can kind of walk through it at your own pace. But if you don't want to go through that, or if you're having trouble finding your exact user guide, go ahead and pull up your Wi-Fi software, your router software. And from there, it's going to look something like this. It's going to have a network map, internet, wireless, advanced, maybe something a little bit different. More likely than not, you're going to click on the advanced to find your NAT forwarding, in this case, is what it's labeled. And under there, you'll see your port forwarding. Now, there's one more step before this, unfortunately. You're going to want to make sure you have a static IP address on your device. Don't worry, I'll show you how to do it real fast. So if you have a Wi-Fi connection, go ahead and type Wi-Fi into the Windows search, and then you'll get the Wi-Fi settings. Go ahead and click on your current connection or whatever your preferred connection is, scroll down to where it says edit. From here, it'll have automatic DHCP or something to that extent, and then it'll have manual. You're gonna to wanna to do IPv4, and then your IP address, you can select whatever you want. It's gonna either be a two digit followed by a three digit, or it's gonna be a variety of things, but generally for a lot of PC users, it's gonna be 192.168.0.1xx. And then for the subnet prefix length, the gateway and the preferred DNES, don't worry because we can find that pretty easily. You're going to want to pull back up your uh, router software, network, status, and from here you're going to find a subnet, default gateway, primary DNS, and secondary DNS to plug into those values. So go going to plug all that in and hit save. So because I use a fixed connection and it's always the same every time, I have a pretty static IP address and I don't bother with this. But for you, especially if your network changes, or if you find that for whatever reason you don't have the same IP address every time you log on, or if you're using a VPN, then you're going to want to do a static IP address for sure. Now, let me show you the alternative method for a wired or an Ethernet connection. So you're going to want to do type in network status into your Windows search. From there, you're going to want to hit change adapters options. Select your connection. And again, this, this actually does work with a, a Wi-Fi connection. It's just similar to the other path. Hit properties, and you will need to be an administrator to do this. From there, go ahead and scroll down on this window. I know it's a little bit hard to see. And select Internet Protocol version 4. When you click on that, it'll give you this little option. So use an IP address automatically, which is going to be a dynamic IP address. So click use the following IP address. And from there, you're going to populate it with however many characters it wants you to fill in. So again, this is probably going to have a similar format to what I demonstrated before. So you're going to want to populate it with an IP address. And that's what you'll use. And then for the preferred DNES and the alternate DNES, go ahead and just plug in the same values that we looked at before on your router software. All right. So now once you have a static IP address, Go ahead and click on NAT forwarding or port forwarding or forwarding or ports, whatever it's going to be labeled on your router software. Click port forwarding. And then for Valheim, default ports are 2456 through 2458. So most likely on your router, there'll be a view common services button. But if there's not, go ahead and type in DNS into the service name. And then for the device IP address, you can hit view connected devices and it'll auto populate with the devices that are on your network. So go ahead and select your device, and it should give you that static IP address that you punched in. If from here, go ahead and for the external and internal ports, do 2456. That is the default port in the server data. So you can do 2456, 2457, 2458. For, for 2457 and 2458, you're going to have to change the information in the data file. So you're going to hit save, and there you go. You have a port, a forwarding port, so you can actually transmit data out. All right, so go ahead and close out of this. I'd recommend minimizing just in case you have errors in the future. All right, now back to Steam. 
So go ahead and click on Valheim dedicated server and just the easiest way to find its local folders, you're gonna go to properties, local files, browse. And then it'll open to you a folder like this wherever your Steam directory is. And then go ahead and right click on start headless server, hit edit. And here, all you're gonna look at is this bottom line here, the information in the quotations mark. So batch name, batch mode, name, my server. This is gonna be where you wanna enter the name for your server. So I'm gonna put new server. Port 2456, like I said, you can select 2457 or 2458 if you prefer. And then the world, I'm gonna do video test. And for password, I'm going to change it to 12345, which is, this is an important step. Even if you wanna have a public server that doesn't require a password, put a password in for your test run and I'll show you why in a little bit. So go ahead and hit save. Close out of this. So go ahead and hit, hit launch. It's going to configure your server. It's gonna set up your server. And uh, when it's done creating the world and the server, it'll say server connected. On the first startup, it does take a little while. All right, now we have game server connected. All right, so from here, go ahead and launch Valheim. All right, go ahead and select whatever character you prefer. And now this is where you might be a little bit confused. This is the local save world for dedicated, for whatever the world that you chose for your server. It's actually not gonna be connected to the server, so you're gonna have to go to join game. There's a good chance that your server won't show up in the select server list. So go ahead and hit join IP and use whatever your static IP is. And that's what your friends will use to connect to your server. So go ahead and hit connect. And this is why I recommended you use a password, because if you get to the screen, you know that the server is up and that you actually can connect to it. Because if you don't put a password, then what will happen is if the, it's an error connecting to the server, it'll fade to black. And then if the server is not actually running correctly, or you don't have your fort porting set up correctly, it'll also fade to black. So it doesn't really tell you what's wrong with the server. So go ahead and type in your password. And then again, you can, you can change this later on if you prefer. All right, and then here we are in the server, and you can see that my friend is already here ahead of me. And uh, yeah, that's that's all there is really to it. But there's a little bit more. All right, so know what you're thinking. How do I admin people? How do I ban people? How do I unban people? Okay, so for this, you're going to want to go to users, your user, app data, local low, iron gate, Valheim. So here are your admin band permitted list. So if app data is hidden for you, what you can do is go to users, select your user again, and then go ahead and click on the search bar and do backslash app data. And it should pull up the folder just like it would if you could see it. And then from there, you're going to go back to local low, iron gate, Valheim. And then for the admin list, you might notice that this isn't a player's name. It's a Steam ID. Now, if you're wondering how to get a Steam ID, you might think it's the friends list. It's not actually, it's not your username either. It's a little particular on how to get it. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to your profile. From there, in this URL, you will see a 17 digit code. And that is in fact your Steam ID. But now you're saying, I don't see a 17 digit code. I know, I know. Go to your Steam, Steam settings, interface, then you're going to want to click on display web address bars when available, which is super useful because you want to be able to admin list people that are your friends even before they join the server. So now you're asking, how do you ban people? Well, you can do it the exact same way, but you might not have the time or want to spend the time to find their Steam ID. So what you can do is you can go to your server log, actually. So when a new character joins, it'll actually say their Steam ID. Just check the last log character, and then you can go ahead and get this Steam ID here and you can enter it into the admin list. Here, make sure you save the f file when you're done. So there's one last step. If you have an admin on your server, there's one last thing you have to do before they can use admin controls. You're gonna go to properties. In the general properties, at the bottom, it'll say launch options. You want to do a dash console. Hit enter, close it, launch Valheim. All right, and now that you're back in Valheim, what you're gonna to wanna to do is hit F5, and here you have your admin commands slash console commands. You can use it for debug mode or cheat mode essentially in single player, but dev commands are disabled for multiplayer sessions, thankfully. So you don't have to worry about your admins abusing the game too much. So from here you can do ban, then friend. And then it'll ban, and it'll auto-generate the same user ID, and then it'll kick them from the game. Pretty simple, so that way you don't have to look for their user ID as long as you're in the game. 
All right, guys, that's going to be it for this video. I hope this taught you everything you need to know about hosting a dedicated server. I had a lot of issues with it because Valheim is just a little bit more confusing than other games, but it's okay. We still love them for it. I'm going to post a link to a PDF down below uh, for a how-to posted by the actual game developers because they know it's complicated also. Uh, I'm sorry that my game's in window this entire time. I know it's super annoying. I've been bothered by it, but uh, just deal with it. Uh, if you like my content, please uh, hit the subscribe button and the like. And um, if you want to see more like this, just just comment suggestions down below. And if there's something you need help with, throw that down there in the comments too, and I'll try and help. Thanks for watching, guys.